Hey, hey. Happy Saturday. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Soap Bible Study with Josh and Sarah. In a new place every day. Yeah, we are in Louisiana. Monroe. Monroe. Monroe, yeah. Louisiana. And uh, did a Harvest Host. So, told you about Harvest Host before. This one's actually a museum. So I just tagged it in the... Oh, good. In the thing. It's the Chenault um, Aviation and Military Museum. Yeah, like his... Yeah, Military History Museum. Yeah. And, um... Good morning, everyone. I just, uh... I just got a... Like a private tour from Ooh. Roy. He just took me through it. And incredible place. It From the outside... It's very deceiving. When you go inside, it's massive, and they have oh. a ton of great things in there. So, unfortunately, we have a lot of driving today, but we could easily stay here, I'm sure, for easily half the day, if not the whole day. Really? I mean, there's, there's two days, three days worth of stuff in there. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Yeah. Because, yeah, I've only seen the outside. If you look at it from this way, it looks like it's just like a little... I was, like, thinking it was, like, one room. Building? No. That place <laughs> is massive inside. I... Anyway, this used to be a military base. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so they'll show the whole thing like this. Now it's actually an airport. But uh, the jet behind us. Yeah. And he even shared with me, like, Delta Airlines was out of here, is where it started. Um, oh. Yeah, so I didn't, I was kind of interesting. There's a lot of stuff in there for Delta. I'll to touch base with Brian Stordahl because yeah. he worked with Delta for a long time. And he probably is aware of uh, Chanel, Louisiana, uh, or not Chanel, Monroe, Monroe Louisiana. And this place because they have a lot of Delta uh, memorabilia stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. So these Harvest hosts, they open up their parking lot or whatever for RVers to stay one night, and then <clears throat> you stay for free. But then they just want you to support them in some way. So I think the tours are free at the museum, but they have a gift shop, and you can leave a donation. It's just different everywhere we go. And this one, they even had electricity for us. A lot of times we don't have that. But that was. Really a huge plus. Yeah, 30 amps, which is great. I mean, we pay yeah. usually quite a bit for that. So then when I was in there, I don't know if you can see it, maybe you can. I got my little pin on. I got a God Bless America pin. Roy gave me a, a cross with the flag in it. Pretty awesome. I like yeah. them. They're pretty cool like pins and they're too. they're just free. It's a, an organization that is giving them out as gifts and really a declaration. God bless America. Love it. And um, so we end up Roy gave me a couple of those, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there, so I'm sure our kids are going to have a blast in there. They even have a spot in there where they can dress up with, like, military fatigue type stuff, and even has a spot where there's, like, just, you know, kind of like this ammo that's, there's not real ammo, but it's like, yeah, you can get them all suited up, so. Oh, they'll love that. <laughs> we'll get them all suited up and hopefully take a photo of them in there, so. <laughs> anyway, really fun location. Yeah, behind us is some old war planes. Oh. They're gonna go underneath where we're at right now is they're building this new display thing and so it's under construction so there's a, a canopy above us mm -hmm. and it's all concrete here and this is where i think those planes are going to go he just says the like a lot of projects and under covid and all this other stuff they're way delayed yeah it's like this should have been done three four months ago and it's it seems like it's going to be another four or five months before it's done so anyway so yeah, that's kind of a quick update. We're heading uh, towards Dallas, Texas today. So it's gonna be a lot of windshield time. We got kind of a long, long drive. It yeah, it's yeah. like it's like five hours. Yeah. So praying for safe travel. Yeah, and, thank you guys for your prayers the last yeah. couple days too. When I when I just see like the little like praying for safe travels, it's like, oh thank you. Because I just assume it's all gonna go safe and then like yesterday. <laughs> The roads when we first came into Louisiana, oh, they were terrible. The interstate wow. was like, woo, and you just feel everything with these long campers. And it's construction zone and yeah. everything else. So it's a uh, praise it's like, God that he surrounds us with angels as we drive mm -hmm. because we're like 65 feet long, a train running down these roads. So uh, anyway, it's uh, it does wear me out a little bit. So I'm sure I'll be pretty tired after today, but yeah. the Lord is with me. So. <laughs> yeah, valuable homeschool experience is right. For sure. That this I would I'm blown away. I had no idea. When I went in there and had Roy is an amazing guy. I just talked to him and what a what a history book. I just in a little bit, I mean he spent probably only 25, 30 minutes with me. 
and they don't open till nine. So he gave me like a private tour. He's here at he was here at before seven. Did he give you coffee too? Yeah, he gave he made me coffee and just. <laughs> I feel so blessed. I just like I, I still haven't blessed anyone, but it was just such a blessing to be with Roy. <laughs> and actually, I could tell that it was blessing him because he yes. just he's like I've never worked a day in my life in the last twelve years. But he's worked here at the museum. But he's just like I. He I loves kept, it. Yeah, he goes. My wife and I were here one day, and she wanted to go shopping, and I'm like, Why do I have to get penalized? <laughs> and so he's like, Can you drop me off at the museum? And he, he went there, and he goes. And we just started getting this habit. She'd always drop me off there. I'd spend pretty much half the day there. And oh, really? Finally, one day I went up to somebody and said, uh, One of the like, Hey, do you guys need help around here? And and the guy goes, Yeah, go talk to this one lady. And he, she goes back, and she's back, and they have a library of his, history books and stuff. And he went and asked her and she started putting him to work and he goes, hasn't stopped. I've been working there for 12 years here. And Does so, his wife shop every time he's here? I, no, I don't, I don't think so anymore, but he goes, yeah, he goes, they were doing that for quite a while and he goes, ah, I loved it. Why do I have to be torture? Uh, it's like, I don't want to go shopping and so she dropped him off here while she went shopping. So anyway. That is so, I love it. That's but awesome. he just, uh, it's so fun to speak to just gentleman like him that I mean he was in the Navy and okay. this is all close to him and this uh, um, Chenault is um, we should know more about him I, we're gonna know a lot about him yeah this is really a, a, a statue of him <laughs> to him and um, how he helped China and uh, stuff like that which is pretty cool victory so anyway. interesting all right I'm excited yeah so we gotta we'll wrap this up and then get in there Got a train going, it sounds like. That's fun. <laughs> Trains, yeah, Ryan caught Train. it. Trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah, yeah, Brian, you would absolutely love this place. I thought of you right away with all the yeah, Delta flight. stuff, the yeah. flight, and the military. I just, it's awesome. I was thinking um, of Nate Kemp, too. Nate Kemp. Nate Kemp, this guy, uh, Roy, reminds me of you to some degree. Yeah, he just, <laughs> In uh, like 30 years? Yeah, or? well, a lot, yeah. <laughs> probably a good 30 years, but. Um, just his love for the history of our country and what what we've done. I, it's just the little things that he was sharing with me. You know, I, I didn't know that back during the war, like we had to ration stuff. Like, mm -hmm. and you think about, you know, we always think how bad things are sometimes. And I think of back then, how bad the things. The good old days. Yeah, how bad <laughs> things really we're were. We're in war, and here's your ounce of sugar yes. and your two ounces of flour for the week. And I'm like, wow. If I you mean, got it. And then to just think that, you know, everyone had to go in to, you know, sign up and go to war. Yeah, and, and the people staying back had to pretty much put all their time and resources into supporting the troops. Yeah. It's a nation. It takes a nation. Makes me very thankful. Yes. yes. So, um, and we'll pray. We're on Matthew, what am I? 18. 18. So, pray. May 1st. Happy May. Happy May. Happy May Day. May is uh, exciting. We talked about May Day. <laughs> yeah. Catch oh. yesterday, so study at the end. Yeah. Went off on a tangent about May Day. <laughs> well, it was fun. Many of you uh, thought about it. And I And have... I didn't feel so alone. <laughs> I wasn't the only one celebrating May Day in my childhood. So I just follow, uh, it's Kyle Lance mm. Martin. Oh, yes, and yes. And he's out of Dallas, Texas. We're hoping to meet him. I'm hoping to. Somehow. I, I don't know. I'm sure he's super busy. Anyway, he put out a May challenge, and he's been going out and blessing people daily as well. He started in... 2020 yes yes 2020 he's, so he's he's got a year under his belt and uh he his i don't know if it's his organization or if he's partnered with it i it's called time to revive and uh they give basically bibles and wristbands to people and they just go and minister um incredible ministry i've i've watched his post I've, and he does teachings he's a pastor anyway Wait, time to revive yeah that was like what the hats were participating with and the Swansons and they went to they brought it to Minneapolis oh okay yeah now that all sounds really familiar they would go down to Sedona I think yeah, yeah. And partner with them and then they brought up an organized like a event in Minneapolis well the paths we are it, paths are all lining up anyway. right now because <laughs> um, anyway you can buy his uh, you can buy these books and do this stuff and again all that being said is that May, he has a May challenge to bless somebody daily yes. in May. So and 31 days of blessing. 31 days of blessing. So, of course, we're in. And uh, that's just going to be additional accountability for me to bless people and our family to bless people. And just Day one. Go about it. So, and I would like to invite like, each one of you. Aren't we already doing this? We're like, yeah, but there's something about rallying around and getting a community to do this. 
And 31 days sounds more doable than 365. Right, right. <laughs> Gets you into a habit. But though. it might be in a habit. Yeah, and it's the same thing with, uh, you know, we always say we do like our 31 days of biking, so yeah. let's do blessings as well. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I'd love to invite you. I'll, I'll put a link on there. I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure what the link is for it, but um, anyway, bugs keep flying my eyes. I know. Um, so, we'll pray. <laughs> We're all fired up. Must be something in the Roy's coffee here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, well, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this place. We thank you for every place that you bring us, Lord, and that it is a divine encounter um, as we're, we go everywhere, Lord, and we are just continuing to uh, be grateful for the place you bring us and the meetings that we have. I thank you for this place, Lord. I thank you for our country. I thank you for all of those that have battled and uh, just put their poured out their lives for our country, Lord. And yes. uh, Lord, that they, they are continuing to we are continuing to pursue freedom and uh, justice for all Lord and I thank you for just that your hand upon America and your blessing upon our country and just how you've continued to uh, just rally us all together when we when we have a cause that's bigger than our own and yeah. so Lord I thank you for that I thank you for the these places here these museums and these historic places where we can remember um, just all those that have uh, surrendered their life for their brothers and sisters so Father, you've put that in each one of us, and may we just continue to realize that's what you've called us to, is to love one another and lay down our lives for one another, Lord, and uh, just continue to serve. So Father, I thank you for this study. I thank you for this time. I thank you for just the, the many blessings that we have. And uh, Lord, I just ask that you uh, speak to us this morning, encourage us, build us up, and uh, just draw us closer to you, Lord. Father, uh, we love you. We're so thankful that you meet us just whenever we turn to you, Lord, you're right there. So, Father, we just, uh, we proclaim the name of Jesus, and we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Matthew 18. So, this morning when I was reading, the, the verse that jumped out to me was four. You start then. Okay. Just keep on talking. So, four, just, it starts out right away. I'm just going to read it and oh, start yeah. at one. At this time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand next to them and said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Um, that one just jumped out at me this morning. I, I typically go to, I think a year ago, we did the play, our kids did, yes. the reenactment of the Merciful Servant, and that's about forgiveness. And that is a great one as well, 21 through 35. Today though, I, I wanted to, uh, I just felt the Lord was talking to me about it. I was like, wait a second, because I've read that, right? You know, be, become like little children. And I, then I started thinking about, wait a second, like I think of our kids and our children and, and how children are 100% really dependent on their parents or somebody else, mm. right? Like a hundred percent. Like yeah. I think of our kids and I'm just thinking like, as we journey us, they, they fully trust us and our provision and our helping them and our leading them. And I was thinking this actually last night because like the kids were outside playing Frisbee while I was making dinner and they came in, their plates are all ready for them because <laughs> it's just easier in the camper for me to serve them a lot of times. and. And they just sit down and they start eating. And I was like, in my head I thought, they just know that there's going to be food on the table. So I interrupt you, but it was oh, literally, exactly it. literally what I was thinking. Like they just are like, of course it's going to be there. And, and yes, I know we can look at situations, you know, like the children don't have maybe as the life that our kids have. But I think for the most part, children, I just think when I was a child too, and I didn't, Praise God, I didn't really ever have to worry about, like, how am I going to make money? How am I going to do these things? Now, I know there's children that do, yet, or how are they going to survive? Yeah, how am I going to get my next meal? But most children, we, we don't really mm -hmm. worry about tomorrow. They just are in today. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> children are all about what's in the moment. Like, what am I going to do now? What am I going to play now? And then they just about expect that their parents or their fathers or mothers are they'll just follow them they'll right. follow them wherever they go they'll somewhat do what they say as i think they have a need it's provided for 
yeah and once they cry out you know parents do something about it right it's just it's kind of one of those things so i'm thinking like wow faith like a child or like if i become like a little child and 100 percent trust my father and not think that i have to do it on my own it's it's interesting as we as we grow up we think oh you know i i have to fend for myself i have to do everything and pro provide for myself and do these things and become self-sufficient and yes I, I want our kids to be able to do that right I don't want them to be on me forever yet I do want to lead them to our Heavenly Father and like he is ultimately the provider it's not me and Sarah it's and he has provided them with gifts and talents to be able to provide for themselves and their family correct correct, correct. Uh. so as I was reading this I just you know what I wrote down is you know that that as, a, if I, as I'm a child, I trust that I'll be okay. I don't worry about tomorrow. They play, they share, they're, they're pretty open to anything, especially the younger ones. You know, I, mm. I feel like as kids get older and things happen and different things like that, I think then they maybe start getting into... They assert their will a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking like little children. Little children, I mean, they, they're all about having fun for the most part. And... Um, they watch their parents or their elders over them. Um, they seek to learn through experiences. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about like me seeking through experiences and through my imagination, right? Like kids, the other thing I've noticed like kids is like they're kind of a open slate. Like whatever you share with them and whatever you think, they just absorb it. They will believe it. And they believe it. And so as, as we speak to children, right, you can share with them the truth. Like I love our kids that, you know, we've been sharing about Jesus and experiencing that and when we talk to them about it they're like well, why don't people believe this you know because <laughs> I'm just like well you know not everybody has known that they just haven't heard about Jesus yet and they've had their parents certain, didn't know. yeah and their parents didn't know or their perception on it was different than what you've been able to experience and so anyway it's just it's it's fun to see that as children that you can come like it's easier for a child to believe than you know an adult and when you tell them this is the truth they're like yeah that makes sense it's like yeah you know and so it's been really fun and especially you know, like we've been Sarah's been teaching more on creation right mm -hmm. and uh, for our children versus like when I was in school we learned about you know Big Bang and all these weird things and so it's like huh yeah so How now you have organisms to, evolved over millions of years you have to kind of come against that and you're like oh wait this makes way more sense creation than what I was taught <laughs> I didn't line up at all. And so anyway, it's it's been fun to uh that was a shot in the dark. To see that, you know, and anyway, and it, I just put in here the other thing, just like I feel like as children, they don't overthink. They just believe. And um and so they don't they don't like yeah. sit there and analyze and go like, well, well blah, blah. sometimes they do, right, as they get older, but just good. They need to think for themselves. But I'm thinking little children. Little children, if I told them or showed them something and they're gonna believe it and so this is why we believe like let's share truth with our children I, I don't want to mislead them and so that's a that's a big thing for us is that we we try to be as truthful as we can be um, we're not perfect but it just uh, it just <laughs> kind of thinking about that for children so my overall application is that to be like a child and uh, to be thinking more like a child and to love and to walk with our Father in heaven and uh, to just think like a child, be like a child, have that imagination and don't be tainted by whatever the lies the enemy has given me and think that, oh, I can't do that or I don't know. Like, you know, it's fun to dream with our kids and talk about the possibilities of like what we could do. We've already developed a whole bike shop and a restaurant and things and the kids have already got their job. Like. I love that because their imagination like so dad so when we have our restaurant like they're already in like we our just started shop. our coffee shop we planted a seed and I love their faith because they're they're already down that road like they already got their jobs and know what they're doing and who's gonna do this who's gonna do that I'm like this is awesome they're even dividing out the finances yeah of like course. well who's gonna <laughs> buy the eggs because we all need eggs for what we're making here <laughs> but anyway it just it's it's just the Lord is showing me like Josh be more like your kids mm. don't limit yourself <laughs> by these things of the world or my yes. past or whatever that is we perceive as the reality of this world correct he's like with me anything is possible 
So have that faith, speak into it, um, start moving towards it, right? Like our kids, same thing, like they believe they're getting motorcycles and different things like that. And so they're just starting to move in faith towards it. Mm -hmm. And they're declaring uh, it every day. And so I just, I think, well, I know the Lord is showing me through my children um, a lot of lessons. And so as I read that, he just is like, you know, Josh, just have faith like your children do and uh, continue to go down that path and trust me and I got this. You don't need to be the one in charge. I don't need to be the one leading the way. I just need to follow my father. And uh, so that's my prayer. Love it. Yeah, that's perfect. Like the Passion Translation says, um, learn this well, unless you dramatically change your way of thinking and become teachable and learn about heaven's kingdom realm with the wide-eyed wonder of a child, you will never be able to enter in. So I feel like that's what you're talking about, like yeah. that wide-eyed yeah. wonder, like let your imagination soar. Anything is possible. The Lord can do anything. I mean, yes. just like most kids believe that their dad is the strongest dad. He can do anything. Right, right. Of course he can do that. Right, right. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. we get hurt trying to show them that, yes, yeah. we can. <laughs> My dad can do that. I don't know. I used to be able to do that. No. <laughs> uh, faith like a child, just, yeah, it's so good. And, um, yeah open-eyed wonder and keeping that wonder too like I wonder if what would it be like if we did you know this or <clears throat> I like to that it, it just I feel like children really their limits are they really don't have limits limitless yes they are a lot a lot more limitless because they just why not you know it's kind of like I think many times we've failed and we think that well we just can't do that well we really are just learning we learned that it wasn't that way and so um, there's another way. There's a better way. Let's figure that out. So, I, uh, yeah, That's so good. grateful for it. Thank you, Lord, for revelation. Well, that's like super fun because I had something similar, but a little yeah. bit different. Good. So I also was going off of that, the little children part, but then with the forgiveness of the last, my, my, um, it says unlimited forgiveness is that last section of Matthew 18, where he's talking. He just gives, Jesus answers, well, Peter's asking, okay, I mean, I now knowing Peter from the Chosen, <laughs> right. it's so funny. I can just hear him asking, you know, like, how many times do I have to forgive my fellow believer who keeps offending me? Seven times? Like, I'm sure he was like, really? Like, it would have to be seven times? Like, that's a lot. <laughs> Jesus answers, not seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven times. The lessons of forgiveness in heaven's kingdom realm can be illustrated like this. And then he goes into this. I won't read the whole story. Um, maybe we can re we can even attach it onto here, the one from last year where the kids acted it out. I thought it was hilarious. We, <laughs> we had, had the we King's had writer, yeah. Asher King's writer in it too. <laughs> it was fun. Um, I realized that this morning when I was reading, I was like, oh, this is where it was. Matthew 18, where they did their play. It'd be great to do that again. So I was realizing that I want to have forgiveness like a little child. Like oh. I want to, I was just thinking like, well, how does a little child forgive? In my head, I see it like in the sandbox. Uh, one child, child A throws sand in child B's face. Child B is mad and like, mm, like, you know, angry, holding a fence against child A. And then five minutes later, they're playing nicely together. Whereas adults, so let's say adult A hurls insult at adult B. Adult B could have a lifetime of anger and bitterness and every time they see that person, they have this like stirring up of like, oh, and it just like manifests and it actually grows with time. And then it affects them, adult B, more than it is affecting adult A, but it still affects the other person as well. And it, and it probably affects the family or whoever they're around. You know, it's like bitterness is, is really bad. Yeah. It, it really affects, it causes you to age <laughs> prematurely. It can cause disease and yeah. sickness and illness. And it, it really is core. I mean, it affects your hormones like at a physiological level. Um, so I was like, when, when does it switch? You know, like when, when do we stop being like a little child? I, I feel like that's different for everybody. Like I look at, it's our oldest, Kaden is 14 and I look at other 14 almost 15 year olds and they are a lot more mature than he is we'll just put it that way but there's times where he's like playing before bed and I'm like oh wow like I'm so glad that he still has this childlike heart that he hasn't made the switch over yet 
to being an adult and thinking that I'm too old for that, I don't want to do that because it still brings him joy. You know, I feel like right. there's something in there that we stop doing some certain things that bring us joy because it doesn't seem appropriate by the world standards anymore. Um, like when do we start taking offense personally and refuse to release the other person for, through forgiveness? So I was thinking like, okay, so a child, yeah, like they're playing together, one of them gets mad, they forgive. The adult says, I will maybe forgive once they get what they deserve. Mm. It's like we want justice. Like all of a sudden, we think that the other person should get, we need to get even with them or there will be a natural consequence of their actions. Like I'm even thinking about people groups, we've talked about that before like loving your enemies, like, well, who is my enemy or who am I holding unforgiveness towards? Like that could be the Nazis, that could be the KKK, that could be Black Lives Matter, that could be, you know, whatever it might be. It doesn't necessarily have to be an individual in your life. And that's really what I was thinking about this morning, that sometimes we can so easily justify our anger and allow, like, I feel like over time, as we don't forgive, we start to justify our anger and our bitterness and our resentment towards that person more and more. Like more time allows us to to stay angry and actually like it stirs it up and it and it's like the yeast of the Pharisees. Like it actually causes it, the unforgiveness to grow. And then enter in like vain imaginations and then we're like, oh, well, I bet their motives were this. And then we start thinking all these things that weren't part of the picture at all. And if we just addressed it right there and then, I think he does talk about that restoring broken relationships right before this like go to your fellow believer and and you know confront them I don't necessarily love confrontation but I know that when it happens then it it saves a lot of heartache and a lot of pain and a lot of suffering yeah um, and a lot of turmoil in my mind if I can just address it right away mm -hmm. so my application is that I don't want to allow like any seeds of bitterness or unforgiveness to cause weeds to grow. I was getting this image of like these seeds getting planted of unforgiveness and then it growing into these weeds that actually sh like kind of like the parable of the sower, like, like that were strangling out the truth and the word of God because I was allowing these things that were not from the Lord to grow and they take up room. They, they like, it's actually like a physical space right. of mental capacity and uh, even our heart. It allows that to, to to like strangle out the healthy plants, the the truth of the word. Um, even like political parties, that was coming to my mind too. I think it's easy to be like, oh, I'm just giving up on America, you know, which whatever way. Maybe it was the last four years. Maybe it's the next four years. It, it, we could go either way, you know. It's it's like, well, that's that's not the way of the Lord. Like he is victorious no That's matter right. what. Do yep. we really put all of our faith and trust in a man? I hope not, mm. even though it feels that way sometimes. But coming into forgiveness for whether you believe or not that the, the person elected, you know, President Biden right now, if he got there legally or not, I don't know. Will we ever know? I don't know. Will justice ever? I don't know. But to release forgiveness over the people doing those things because the Lord sees and he knows. You know, the more we read about David in 2 Samuel, he was victorious in all that he did. And up until this point, he has a very clean record. We haven't had Bathsheba enter into the picture yet. <laughs> I think that might be tonight. But um, we've had this, he's had this really clean record and the Lord has just continually blessed everything that he does. He's like killing off 22,000 people here, 11,000 people here and defeating all their enemies. And it said the Lord gave David victory in everything he did. And I just, I just marvel at that. I'm like, wow. And he was so like reassured of his victory because he knew that his slate was clean. And so that's each of our own personal responsibilities. That's my responsibility. I can't control what another political party is doing, but I can control how I behave and how I honor and how I react. I'm totally speaking to myself right now because I probably need to talk to our kids about this because it, you know it's so easy to get caught up in the distractions and the well they did this and I I don't believe that way and you might not but it's it's like there's there's still people created by God made in his image just not acting the way maybe that he has them act and to release them for, you know release forgiveness over them so that we can clean our own slate 
and it, their actions are up to them. We don't have to take that on and then hold this seed of bitterness, which is strangling out the truth in our lives and preventing us from being fully who we were created to be. Yeah. I think a lot of times just, you know, you've got to realize that we're all, we've all been hurt. And I feel like out of those hurts, we do things that we really regret doing, but it's out of a hurt. You know, I always say hurting people hurt others. Yeah. And uh, there's some lie or whatever. And I, I like to believe that we're all really trying to do the best we can, yet sometimes we do it and we're like, ah, oh, why did I do that? And it was out of just a hurt that you have or something like that or a lie or ignorance or whatever it is that we go and react and do things. I was even thinking like, there's something about it like uh, kids, you know, going back to kids, Yeah. is that I almost wonder if some of the behaviors and things that aren't from God are actually taught indirectly through us as parents. And like, you know, I, sure. one, of, one of the examples was, it's actually, I, I believe it was in our one of our real estate like training things or something like that, or a book I read. But it's like kind of the, we call it laziness, is actually taught. Because if you think of kids, like they run and do and they play and they do all this stuff and it's like, <laughs> somehow in there is a shift where we just wanna sit and we don't wanna work, we don't wanna play. It's just like, somewhere in our culture, like things like that's actually a better thing when I believe we're, we're created to do that work and do that stuff. And then for some reason in there, all of a sudden we like feel like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to be this way because that's the culture. And uh, I just remember, I can't remember where I read that, but it was like an aha for me. I'm like, you know what? You're right. It's like we weren't created to just sit around and not do anything. But for some reason, something in our culture thought that that was what we should be striving towards. Yeah. And uh, so somehow we teach that to our kids that it's okay to just not play or we shouldn't be working so hard. We should be, I don't know. I, and I'm, I can't quote it all right, but. I feel like some of the same things happen in our own lives based on our culture, society, whatever it is, that it kind of leads us to think, well, this is how we should be. And it's like, well, that's not really how we're created. And so this was kind of into that yeah. same, same realm of like forgiving. And like you said, when we're little, we do that. But then somehow we think, oh, now that we're adults, we shouldn't do that. And I, I was even just thinking as you talked about Caden, our, our oldest, that maybe some of the stuff we tell him is maybe a lie. And, uh, yeah. and that we got to pray about and figure out too because just because he's 14 he should be acting a certain way well we do find ourselves saying I mean I say it and I've heard you say it too like yeah. how old are you like, yeah. and so even when we do helpful. that it's kind of maybe that's not a good thing to say because uh, you know he might be taking that the wrong way and that he's supposed mm -hmm. to act like somebody else that's really not who God created him to be and so just kind of a revelation as you're speaking I'm like alright Lord thank you for that revelation as a parent to really let him be who he's called to be and whatever my expectation is what a 14 year old should be doing maybe that's not what the Lord has in mind for him and um, so just thinking through all that yeah that's good and just to talk through that with him right because the Lord has amazing plans for each one of our children and each one of us even as adults there's still amazing plans in store for us just to ask the Lord what is that you know, and let's not fall victim to what everyone around us thinks we should be doing. Because I think that's what most of us do is we fall into, well, I want to please everybody else and do what yes. they think I should do versus what the Lord says I should do. That's and uh, I want to be about what the Lord wants me to do. And I know that as I do that, it's actually going to be a blessing to everyone around me. Um, so. Yeah. So I think if Jesus is telling us to become more childlike, we should probably do that. We're going to have fun today. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun to dream with the kids and, and think about stuff. And I don't know, last yesterday we were talking, they, they have all their ideas. And, and as a father, you kind of want to be like, let's do it. <laughs> but in the worldly sense, I'm kind of like, I don't know if that's the smartest thing to do. <laughs> but now I need to reconsider it and go like, I don't know. Maybe I'm not thinking big enough. Maybe I'm not... And I know I'm not. I know I'm like limiting God. And uh, so it's Maybe just... Maybe we'd uh, be like Roy, who says he hasn't worked a day... Totally. ...of his life in the last 12 years doing I mean, what he loves. I mean, it's true joy. When you read Roy, he's he's awesome. So I'm excited to spend more time with him here after this. And uh, just get wisdom. It's like, wait a second, you know? So... 
hope that speaks to you. It's speaking to me right now. You guys yeah. are getting to watch this process at all. <laughs> Which is such a fun journey with each one of you. So I know the Lord's working in each one of you as well. Um, just our prayer. So Father, you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. So Father, we just, we want to be like little children. You've created us to not carry all these heavy burdens. You've, yes. you've, you've called us to be your children, your son and your daughters. And uh, that we can just journey with you in full freedom. That you are with us and you love us so much. So Lord, uh, I, just, I just ask Lord that you just continue to remove and refine and take away all of those worldly thoughts, all of the things that have limited me and my mind and our minds from entering into the kingdom of heaven. And so, Father, I just ask that you can help me dream again. Help yeah. all of us dream again to what's possible with you. And, uh, Lord, that we can say yes to it and walk in faith, Lord. Just like Sarah's talking about David when he was going to these battles. I mean, everything was against him that he'd be like, what am I doing? Yet he knew you were with him. And when you were with him, nothing can stop him. And he just continued to have victory over victory after victory. So, Lord, that's what you've called each one of us to walk in. So, Father, we just, we just say yes to that. Open up uh, just those opportunities and help us Lord to just continue to humble ourselves like little children trust you in everything walk with you and uh, just be just so filled with joy and love for you because you're yes. our father thank you Lord thank you for this revelation and this day and uh, Lord we just uh, we so love you and uh, excited for this journey ahead in Jesus name we pray All right, well, bless each one of you. I hope that speaks to you as well. A yes day with the kids. Is that where I don't say no all day? Oh, man, wouldn't that be a party? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's fun to dream. So make I think, sure we don't uh, go shopping on that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yesterday we were at Walmart. Can we get this? Can we get this? Can we get this? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Fridge is full. Freezer's full. No. <laughs> Not good for you. No. Yeah. It's uh, to really talk through those decisions more, you know, and, and say, okay, versus just saying no all the time. It's like, I'm, really, I'm actually really great at saying no. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I like to process with them a little bit more. But what about if we did this and we probably can't do this, which is maybe a lie as well, because that's my limiting belief is I think that there's a limit. And in uh, some of my sales training stuff, they talk through that mindset and that, we limit ourselves all the time yeah and and Sarah and I you know we we trying to break free from that right that's why we live in a motorhome or traveling all over the nation is because we said yes to let's try this even yeah. though I've never heard of anybody really doing this um, now we know all kinds of people. now we know all kinds of them but I'm just saying that initially those kind of things to breaking free to why not you know and you come up with the reasons but usually all of my why nots are in fear they're really not in in faith yeah not believing that it's all possible correct and so as mm. as we talk through this it's like what is my limiting belief here and uh just talking through that with our family and all these things that are possible so more to come on all that um it's never too late that's all i want to say so looks like garrett's out so we're gonna go in and uh, get yeah, some history i should make some breakfast first all right. Well, we love you guys. Of you have and a have, wonderful Saturday. Have a great Saturday and uh, celebrate will, uh, May. Happy May Day. Celebrate May Day. Meeting get, your neighbors. If you get an opportunity to bless, that might be a great way to just go meet your neighbor and say hi today. Bring him a little plant, a little and, flower. Uh, let's uh, let's try to let's go out and bless people daily with whatever way of just encouraging words or something forgiveness. Like that. Forgiveness. Bless them with forgiveness. <laughs> That'll bless you as well. Yeah. So. All blessings come back in return. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you tomorrow for uh, Matthew 19 and Psalm 106, the first part of Psalm 106. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.